So yeah, I have finally managed to take my very first photo of the magnificent M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. And I could not be more excited, literally, because this is the object that got me into astrophotography in the first place. I have always dreamed of capturing the Andromeda Galaxy with my own camera and here we are. So in this video I want to share with you my experiences and also give you a few tips on how to photograph the Andromeda, how to find it on the night sky, how to frame it up using your camera, what kind of equipment do you even need, what kind of lens, what kind of focal length and what kind of camera settings would I recommend in order to get the best possible quality. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do before you even head out into the night and try to take a photo of it is that you need to figure out whether is it feasible to take a photo of the Andromeda given your current location and your current time. Because not every deep sky object is visible throughout the dark night in every location on Earth on every given arbitrary time. So in order to figure that out, I would recommend to go to a website called telescopius.com. I have it open right here. And right here on the top you have this search and you can search for pretty much any object on the night sky. Right here I already have the Andromeda Galaxy M31 open and what you can see right here on the right hand side you can see the graph and this graph sort of shows you the elevation and also the azimuth. The blue part on the left and right is daytime, the yellow parts is the twilights and the black part in the middle is the dark night and the green line at the bottom is showing you the horizon line. So right here as you can see the Andromeda is pretty much visible very high above the horizon throughout pretty much the entire night. So this time of year is perfect from my location. So you need to check the that first, whether is it even possible given your location like I mentioned. And by the way, I have a full separate video about how to find objects on the night sky, how to use sites like telescopus.com in more detail. So if you have not seen this video of mine yet, it will be on the end screen of this video, so make sure to stick around. So in order to take a photo of the Andromeda, of course you're gonna need a telephoto lens at least, but this is a common misconception. I was actually pretty much intimidated by the Andromeda because I was reading that it's a very far away object and I probably need a telescope or a very very long lens of focal length for like 600 millimeters on a full frame camera or something like this but that is really not the case all you really need to have is a pretty decent telephoto lens for instance i was shooting this with this canon 70 to 300 but even if you have like a 70 to 200 or something like this you can definitely take a photo of the andromeda and i was using a full frame canon eos r but if you have a crop sensor camera from canon it adds a 1.6 crop so like 300 from this gives you a reach of 480 millimeters full frame equivalent so you can get a pretty decent reach but like I said 200 or 300 even on a full frame is definitely enough to capture Andromeda you don't need to invest in a heavy telescope just to take a photo of that and then because we are going to be using a pretty long exposures you are going to need some kind of a star tracker and also you don't need a fancy and super expensive equipment all you need to have is just a portable star tracker like this Skywatcher star adventure that i am using and because we are going to be using the telephoto lens i would recommend to have a declination bracket a dovetail with a counterweight in order to mount the lens on top of that because it's going to be pretty heavy and it's going to balance on the tracker way way better but if you don't have it if you only have the bullhead attachment on the skywatcher star adventure you can definitely try to do it as well but bear in mind that the tracking accuracy may not be as good as if you have a properly balanced tracker but you can definitely give it a try and now assuming that it is possible to shoot the andromeda for your current location you actually need to head out and you need to go into a pretty dark location generally the darker the sky the better the results will be you can use the portal scale class in order to figure it out which place around your neighborhood you need to go in order to be in the best possible quality of the sky. Typically you need to get away from the city as far as possible but actually when I went out to shoot the photo that you've seen in the intro I didn't drive off very far from my city and I live in a pretty big city down south Poland it's called Krakow and I drove like maybe 40 or 30 kilometers up north and west from Krakow so I wasn't very far away from the big city and despite of that I managed to take a pretty decent photo of the Andromeda. So now that you are out in the field let me actually show you what can you see out in the night sky and how to find Andromeda. 
So right here we are in the app called Stellarium. This is an app available for pretty much all of the operating systems and it also has a mobile app on your phone. So you can definitely access what I'm seeing here, right here on your smartphone if you are out there in the field. So assuming that you are on the northern hemisphere, you need to locate Polaris. You need to locate Polaris anyway because you need to use the tracker and the tracker needs to be pointed at the north celestial pole which is you know close to Polaris. So once you have your Polaris, the Polaris is right here and you have the Big Dipper on the left. You probably recognize the Big Dipper anyway because if you were trying to locate Polaris probably the first thing that you did was to locate the Big Dipper and if you look out on the right hand side of the Big Dipper pretty much the same kind of distance as to Polaris you can see this zigzaggy kind of line those five stars that are aligned in this kind of uh, this kind of pattern and this is the Cassiopeia this is very easy to spot also even from an urban sky you can definitely see this pattern on the night sky this is Cassiopeia and if you go a little bit further to the right from Cassiopeia, you have these two pretty bright and pretty yellowish kind of stars that are also very significant on the night sky. You will probably be able to tell which ones are those. They are to the right and a little bit to the bottom from Cassiopeia. So the left one is called Almac and the right one is called Mirac. And excuse me if I'm not pronouncing those names properly. I literally have no idea how to pronounce them, but let's assume that it's called Mirac. Okay, so you have Mirac and if I zoom in a little bit more here, you can see that we have those two stars above from Mirac and also on the right hand side we have those three stars that are sort of like this one is like a closing bracket and this one is like an opening bracket. I was able to see those six stars from the location that I was shooting the Andromeda from. I was seeing it with my naked eye. No binoculars, not anything like this, just a naked eye. And if you take a look at Mirac again and those two stars that are above it, pretty much like this, you know, similar distance from it and kind of angled to the left. Then do you see this little cloud up here to the right and to the top? This is the Andromeda galaxy. If I click here, you can see on the left, you can read Andromeda Galaxy. So like I said, Andromeda is pretty easy to find even with a naked eye. And when I was framing up my shot, I was using an ISO of 25,000 on my camera. I was using live view in order to focus my camera. And I definitely could see those six stars that form this, this kind of a brackety thing. And if I looked closely, you could even see the Andromeda Galaxy as this little cloud right there on the live view. So after I have taken my first test shot, it was a clear confirmation that Andromeda is definitely in my frame. Let me actually show you my very first test image that I have taken with 70 millimeters focal length because again, I was using the zoom from 70 to 300. So the first test photo that I taken was with 70 millimeters. So let me show you that. Okay, so here in Lightroom, as you can see, we have 70 millimeters and right here you have some stars. If I go with the texture to minus 100 you can probably see only the most significant stars and as you can see this one right here is Mirac this one is Almac and right here those are the two stars to the left and a little bit to the top from Mirac and then right here you have the Andromeda it's pretty bright it's pretty prominent even at 70 millimeters focal length you cannot definitely miss it on a test shot like this and this was taken with like five seconds of a shutter speed and ISO 25,000 so you can definitely see where Andromeda is on your test shot and you can use that in order to guide you to further frame up your shot correctly so that Andromeda sits actually in the middle and then you can punch into your final focal length which in my case was 300 and bam there you have it you have a dead on very good framing on Andromeda and as you can see Andromeda is pretty bright on those shots unlike Nebula that I was photographing beforehand I really need to try hard to see something like this I need to download the image to my laptop fiddle around with clarity and dehaze contrast and stuff like this in order to confirm that the Nebula that I was trying to shoot is actually in my frame because on the test shot I just had a bunch of stars and this kind of a you know brown background but right here you can clearly see where Andromeda is so the next shot it is framed up a little bit more towards the center then a little bit better then I have finally punched into 300 millimeters so this is pretty much my final framing and then I adjusted my ISO and my exposure and I settled for an image that looks like this and this is with some kind of uh, little corrections before even stacking so as you can see 300 I was using a shutter speed of 100 seconds which is like a minute and 40 seconds f5.6 and ISO 1600 and then I of course left my camera running to take as many exposures as possible so I can then further 
process them on my computer, I could stack them in order to bring out the detail and reduce noise. And one thing that you need to keep in mind, if you are deciding on your final exposure settings, your camera settings to take your light exposures, you need to look out to not blow out the highlights in the center of Andromeda. Because in the center of the Andromeda galaxy, there is a supermassive black hole and the stuff that is circling the supermassive black hole, the accretion disk is generating a lot, a lot, a lot of light. So it's very easy to actually blow the highlights on your photos near the center of Andromeda. So what I would recommend you to do is not try to push the histogram towards the right in order to like capture as much light as possible. I think for modern cameras, it's definitely a good idea to keep the histogram somewhat on the left side as you can see here in Lightroom my graph is laying on this part of the histogram and then if needed I can just raise the exposure in post-production I can raise the shadows or any part of the frame without the risk that I was actually blowing the highlights in camera in the first place and as you can see if I enable this highlight marking and reset this to the raw image as you can see right here I am actually blowing a little bit of the highlights right in the middle of the Andromeda galaxy. So if I have used a higher ISO or a longer shutter speed, I would run the risk of actually blowing a little bit more around the circle. So this is something that you need to be aware of if you are shooting deep sky objects like a galaxy with a supermassive black hole in the center of it. So once you have everything set up, you have your final framing, you have your final exposure settings, you just need to leave the camera running on an intervalometer and capture as many exposures as possible, like I mentioned, in order to get the best possible quality later on in post-production. And also, it is very important that in post-production, if you are stacking your images in software like Deep Sky Stacker on a Windows, or Starry Sky Stacker on a Macintosh, it's important that you go through every single of the exposures and actually verify which of them should be excluded because it happened to me that night that the, there was a little bit of wind and if a gust of wind blows into your tracker, then no matter how good of a polar alignment you have, it is going to ruin that particular exposure. So you just need to verify and you need to exclude those exposures that are unusable because they have elongated stars because of the wind or some other environmental factors. So it's definitely better to have less images in your stack and a little bit more noise and less detail in the image than having artifacts like, you know, elongated stars and things like this which would be caused by taking exposures that were clearly ruined by something like a gust of wind blowing into your tracker. And the best thing about astrophotography like this, when you are taking a photo of just a tiny fraction of the sky, is that you can actually go back the other night or a week from now or a month from now, or maybe even a year from now, frame up your target the exact same way and take a lot more exposures because sometimes you know clouds come by and you have to call it a night maybe your spouse called and you know was asking when are you going to get home already because she was waiting for you or something you know this sometimes happened to me as well so i need to call it a night and then uh, the second night i can go back i can frame it up pretty much the same kind of way i don't need to be super precise because programs like deep sky stacker or star sky stacker can actually do the alignment for you so you don't even need to worry about that. And you can come back the other night, take a lot more exposures and more and more and build up on that. And you can process your images in Photoshop. You can share it with your friends, be happy about it. And then you can actually come back to these images, take a lot more exposures, create a new stack, shove it into Photoshop, create a new edit and bring out more and more and more detail in your images which is pretty awesome. And if you are working non-destructively in Photoshop, which means that you are not actually modifying the pixels on the image layer, but you are building on top of that with adjustment layers like I am used to do, then what you can do is actually generate a new stack and then swap out the bottom layer in Photoshop and bam, all your adjustments are then applied to the new stacked image, all of like dodging and burning, selective contrast, curves adjustments, etc., etc. As long as they are done non-destructively, they will just be applied to the new version of the stack and out of the bat, you will end up with a higher quality image, which is, you know, pretty awesome. All right, that's basically all I had for you for today. Remember, how to find Andromeda on the night sky is pretty easy to find. You don't need a fancy telescope, just a telephoto lens will definitely do. Be careful not to blow out the highlights near the center of the Andromeda galaxy and, you know, have fun with it. Leave a like down below if you liked this video, hopefully. Also, leave a comment down below if any part of the video was confusing or anything. I pretty much try to answer every single comment I get on YouTube. And by the way, go to the description of this video. You will find links to Amazon to all of the equipment that I was using. My lens, my star tracker, 
everything will be linked down below so if you want to pick it up for yourself you can definitely find it there in the description and also consider subscribing to my channel because i post new videos pretty much every single week and i already have a bunch of videos related to astrophotography and also related to photography in general and then also filmmaking because my channel is all about things you can do with your camera so definitely go through my channel you can probably find some interesting stuff in there already and right now check out these two videos they will definitely be interesting to you about night sky photography subscribe here for future videos and see you next time clear skies bye bye